Hi there, in this video we're going to take a look at an interesting experiment I, I did. Uh, it's about auto-generating prompts. We're going to ask GPT-4 to generate so many prompts for us for a specific task. In this case, the task is to generate some code for, in this case, a Python calculator using TKinter. But the goal is we want it to generate at least, we want uh, the model to generate at least 500 lines of code. See here, we're... We're trying, so we're trying to get GPT-4 to generate prompts, which will make GPT-3.5 Turbo 16K to output at least 500 lines of code. So I thought it would be an interesting experiment to try, plus it's evaluatable, so we can actually count the lines of code. Uh, so we first ask GPT-4 to generate the prompts, and then we save them, each one, to a JSON object, along with and then we save it, and then we ask GPT 3.5 Turbo to generate the code somewhere here. Yeah, right here, the code generation. And then we save both the prompt and how many lines this prompt were to did get GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K to generate how many lines, right? So we'll talk about the code in detail. I also split this into three parts. I got the prompts generated in a neutral tone and in polite tone and in more like a commanding authoritative tone just to see if it would make any difference. So here I'll show you some charts that I got at the end because since we're saving all the prompts and how many lines it generated, we can actually plot it. So this was one of the first experiments I did, which was promising. As you see, this blue line is how many lines of code each prompt was able to get GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K to generate. And this orange line is the average, and it seemed like it was going upwards. The reason is because once we generate the prompts and then the code, then we know, since we know how many lines each prompt had generated, we then take the top three from the first top 10. We, we take the top three from the top 10 and give, give it back to GPT-4. Okay, look, these are the best prompts. And then we pick the bottom three from the bottom 10 and say, these are the worst. I originally wanted to pick these at random, but then I changed my mind. That's why there's only th that's why I'm saying three from the top down, three from the bottom. You can actually modify it to do that. However, the, the, my first experiment was promising. So this this is ten prompt, ten iteration. So GPT four originally generates ten prompts, and then we pick the top three and the worst three, and then generate ten more prompts and ten more prompts uh, through ten iterations. So this looked promising, but then. When I did this again and again, it just didn't really, so we're looking at the orange line, it didn't really do that well. But then I realized I had a misspelling in a prompt, and then I did it again with, without the misspelling. And as you see, I wasn't able to see much of an improvement. So, and then let's take a look at the polite. As you see, it's pretty steady. And I have some older data here as well from a previous experiment. So we save all the generated code as well. So I'll put this code in Patreon and along with all the codes that were generated. As you see, these are all calculator code. Let's take a look at commanding. As you see, this is still very much a flat line. Although one of the prompts generated really number 98, I believe. We can take a look at that. Actually, number 98 is really long and actually works. Look, it's... 316 lines of code and when we run it here is the app it actually has almost everything in it except the equal button ironically it missed the equal well, unless i'm missing it so you actually all the buttons work see i believe well this one didn't but there's no equal sign anyway but 316 lines of code but i tried this prompt i can actually find this prompt in data.json right it's the 98th prompt, so he's, he produced 315 lines of code. I actually tried this with Chat GPT, and I couldn't get it to produce this many lines of code. So I don't know uh, if any one of these prompts are special or not, but uh, I'll, I'll let you be the judge of that. It takes some target lines, which is how many lines of code we're going to produce, right? So I want a system which I can evaluate. So I just chose to produce prompts, which is going to write some Python code, and the evaluation target was how many lines of code it produces. 
you can actually modify this code for a, a different purpose. And now we define a global index so that, that since we're going to use third pool executor and parallel processing and whatnot, we make sure, just to make sure that our index doesn't get all mixed up. And now we check for generated code and uh, we create it if it doesn't exist. So these were the code files that we just recently generated. And now we have a parse uh, prompt uh, method because if we just take a look at our prompt, it says, your goal is to write uh, this many distinct and unique complete instructions for a GPT model for it to output at least this many lines of code writing it. And this is the task. You can actually turn this dynamic to a Python calculator app using TK enter. Return each of the prompts in between. They say these tags so we can parse them. So one thing interesting. So there's quite a lot of small interesting things about this code. GPT-4 always actually returned parsable code. So that's, that's something to note. So that's why since we are asking it to be returned in these, then we have a parse prompt function, which actually looks for that and just parses the prompt out of that. That's it and returns those prompts. Then we have extract feedback prompts, which, is, which does the same thing, but from the other call. Let's actually take a look at that too, real quick. So this is our call, provide feedback and generate new prompts. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to this and uh, go over it, but that is what this one does. They do the same thing. I just wanted to keep them separate. And then there's the prompt generation uh, method, which takes in a feedback. In the first iteration, it's going to be none, right? Because in the first iteration, the original prompts are going to be created. And then in the second and further iterations, we're going to have feedback. So if you check if there's feedback, then we make this call. Otherwise, we make the original call, which just does the same thing that we were talking about. So it says, return each of the prompts in between these tags. Main goal is to get these prompts to generate at least this many lines of code each so emphasize this rule be as creative and verbose as you need to be get the model to generate at least this many lines of code each so i originally didn't have this part and then i later added it it didn't, didn't seem to make much of a difference temperature one makes tokens 2000 we do use streaming we do have a minute try and accept blocks this is how to do the streaming responses and then we return a dictionary of prompts and feedback prompts when we do get them then we have another method for code generation, which just sticks in the prompt, right? So we're just going to send this to GPT 3.5 Turbo. 16K, we just with the prompt, which is the prompt that will be produced, which is going to look like this. Working with Python, so these are all GPT-4 generator prompts. Let's just take a look at one of them here, this one. Working with Python and its graphical user interface library, fabricate a calculator that exhibits comprehensive functionality. So as you can see, but it also says a well-rounded code of minimum 500 lines. So, so these are all different attempts and different ways of saying it, right? Just to see if it will produce different results. Uh, before we continue, I do want to mention that, first of all, I will have this code available in my page. A uh, link will be in the description. Also check out my website, www.echohive.live. You can find and search all my videos here quickly. Like for example, if you're interested in prompt engineering, you can search for prompt, find all the videos that maybe have more relevant content according to prompts and whatnot. You can find the descriptions. These are all my YouTube videos. I have over 180 of them. Take a look. It's like a live.live. Make sure to put the, the www in the front, I think, because some people told me without that it wasn't working. Anyway, just keep that in mind. So the link for the, my website and to my Patreon will be in the description. So one thing I found that funny is that, so if you look at some of the polite, before we continue, I guess we should should mention this. So this, this one, so I will have all of these available at Patreon. So I have this commanding. There's, these are all the same codes, but they're designed to produce the same result with different methodologies. I guess here in this case, I'm asking it to, to be very polite in your instructions, almost convince the model to generate the code with kindness, right? And if you look at some of the prompts that generated, some of them are hilarious. So it says, greetings, intelligent GPT model. I'm in need of your, yeah, I'm in need of your expertise. Could you assist me by writing a comprehensive TK enter? Hello, dear GPT model. Salutations, esteemed GPT model, good day. So if you take a look at these, look, there's, there's like 300 of them. Hello, noble AI model. Your impressive coding skills fill me. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't really do much of a difference. And the commanding ones are different. We are too. Uh, see, as an AI model, you are to provide me. I'm commanding you. So, you know, different approaches. So they are all the same except for their prompts. So just take a look at that. That's why I'm only looking at the neutral. Anyway, I also have this other file, the prompt generator class. You can this just generate prompts and saves them to a .py file as a list. Yeah, just uh, 
maybe you can build on this. Anyway, so then we get the code generated here, mix tokens set to 10,000. If you want to try this with GPT-4, make sure you lower the mix tokens. Uh, also pay attention that we are generating prompts with GPT-4, but the code with 3.5 turbo 16K. That also has streaming responses. Then we have just some methods just to parse the code, right? This is what this does and saves it to a file and generated code using our index. And then we have the update JSON method, which saves the prompts into these files, into this JSON object file. And provide feedback, generate new prompts is the main part of our, uh, right? One of the main things that we are doing. So since we have this data.json, which has all our prompts in it, we load it and then we sort it so by the lines of code, uh, lines of code that was generated by each prompt. And then we pick the top prompts and the bottom prompts of 10 of them. If you have 10, I mean, it doesn't matter. So like, for example, in the beginning example we did, we only put in two prompts, so we're not going to have 10, right? But that's fine. This wouldn't throw an error. We still, the top prompts and the bottom prompts would be the same, essentially, in that case. That's why I was using in my experiments 10 prompts. You can use 20 if you like, or more. Anyway, so the feedback prompt is something like this. Your goal is to write this many prompt, distinct and unique, complete instructions for a GPT model for it to output at least this many lines of code writing a Python calculator app. And then here I'm seeing here are the top three prompts and I'm inputting it as the first, second, and third of top prompts, but then we check the length of it just so that this doesn't throw an error, just in case if you don't have three prompts in there, especially in the beginning. And then these are the bottom three prompts. And then I say, use these prompts as inspiration to figure out what works and what doesn't and generate whatever made in your prompts, which is our prompt number, right? That will pre-generate at least this many lines of code. So this is the way I thought of it. Maybe you can improve on this. And then this is to plot the data at the end, and then the main process just runs it, right? It generates the prompts, gets feedback, generates code, and then just saves it to the appropriate files. That's about it. And then you here you enter how many prompts you want to start with. Uh, since our evaluation is based on how many lines you define here, and these are the iterations. And if we ever did hit the target lines, then this would actually print, but unfortunately I never was able to see this. So this is it. Uh, it's, it was just a quick little fun experiment. Let me know what you think, both either in the comments or uh, join our Discord server. We have uh, over 800 people there who loves to talk about and build with GPT. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, the code files for this, I mean, pretty much everything, all the generated code and the JSON object and the plot pie and all the files will be available at Patreon. Link will be in the description. Like I said, thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next one.